The Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network presents The Monstrous Regiment, featuring a roundtable of Dominion women seeking to honor Jesus Christ in applying God's Word fearlessly and faithfully in all callings and seasons of life, both in and out of the home, reversing the curse and smashing pagan strongholds. What is human trafficking, and what should our response as Christians be? I'm Tony Kolb, and I'm here with... Erica Collins. And this is The Monstrous Regiment. So, Erica, I'm going to just go ahead and ask you to um, give a brief explanation of who you are, and we can get started. Okay. I'm Erica Collins, and I'm the Sponsorship Director for Children's Rescue Initiative. I am a wife, a mom, and I'm currently a full-time employee at a manufacturing spot over my way and also a full-time student at Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Awesome. Well, we are thankful to have you on here. Thank you. I'm excited. Yes. So uh, we're going to start with the definition of human trafficking. Uh, Human trafficking is the trade of humans for the purpose of forced labor, sexual slavery, or commercial sexual exploitation for the trafficker or others. And uh, the first step to fighting a battle is knowing that there is one. So a lot of people don't even realize that there's an estimated 30 to 40 million people in modern day slavery. Uh, We have some stats here that I'd like to share with you all. The Global Slavery Index of 2018 estimates that on any given day in 2016, there were 403,000 people living in conditions of modern slavery in the United States. That's a prevalence of 1.3 victims of modern slavery for every thousand in the country. The 2017 Federal Human Trafficking Report found that active criminal cases overwhelmingly involved sex trafficking, 95%. Of the 661 active sex trafficking cases in 2017, 65.8% involved child victims. The majority of trafficking operations, 84%, used the internet to solicit purchases uh, or purchasers for sexual services with Backpage.com, Facebook, and Craigslist.com, among others, being the most commonly cited websites. So recently, I went to anti-trafficking training in Coeur d'Alene at Lake City Church, and I was horrified to learn that there are over 165 known illicit massage parlors in the city of Spokane alone, which is not far from where I live. Um, And massage parlors are often a major hub for human trafficking. Um, I also learned that some of the top vulnerable targets are children in foster care, the LGBTQ communities, and the homeless. In the U.S., 63% of trafficked children were homeless. Uh, Something else I learned is that 75% of trafficking in the state of Idaho is familial. There is one crisis home currently being constructed in Idaho to help women or children in these situations, and only two detectives in the entire state dedicated to these cases. Um... Because there isn't a hotline in Idaho dedicated for reporting such behavior, the Idaho Anti-Trafficking Coalition encouraged us to report any suspicious activity to the police by calling 911. Um, So these are um, some of the things I learned about my own state. I'd encourage you to look um, into your personal state where you live, um, see if there is a local coalition, um, and just learn a little bit more about it. Um, yeah, many people in the United States don't even realize that there is such a huge human market right in their own cities. I just talked to a woman, um, when I told her I was getting involved in Children's Rescue Initiative, and she said, oh, okay, that's just in other countries, right? Uh, that doesn't happen here in the U.S. And I, I had to explain to her, yes, it's actually, um, in the U.S. and also globally, um, yeah. the, uh, people are treated as sex objects 
on a continual basis every day in every place. And a lot of us have even maybe experienced this to some degree. So um, sin leads many people to strip away at the value of humanity for the sake of fulfilling their wicked pleasures. Um, so it's actually very common. Um, I don't know, Erica, if you want to share um, some more stats maybe or some global yeah. study. Yeah, I'd love to go back to uh, explaining a little bit more about, you mentioned um, foster care is a big um, hot spot. Um, we were actually just at a conference this past weekend and had a woman come in who had been trafficked for a few years, and she um, let us know that um, teens that run away are mm -hmm. at the most risk within 48 hours because what happens is when a teenager runs away, there's usually a reason. There's trouble at home. And yeah. in her testimony, um, a friend that she loved and trusted, it would be called a, a Romeo pimp here. Um, they lure them into trafficking by creating a relationship, a romantic relationship with them. And unfortunately, this person ended up saying, yeah, I can provide a safe place for you to stay. And he ended up sending her to her his aunt and uncle's house who were both pimps in New York City. And so for two and a half years, she lived a life of horror on the streets, being beaten and abused by pimps. So, yeah, it's definitely a problem. And something else to consider, too, is if you have a drug problem in your area, there's also a trafficking problem. Because a lot of times what will happen is a drug dealer will be a gateway. Um, he'll get the woman hooked on whatever it is that they're enjoying. and um, when the money runs out or she wants another fix or whatever happens, sometimes that's how they'll get addicted. It's like, okay, we'll just have sex for some money and start working for some money for me. And then they get just trapped in that section. Right. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's, a, that's something that the local coalition taught me um, was just talking about um, what signs that you can expect. Um, yeah. Um, like kids with multiple phones, like more than two phones, um, kids with tattoos on their arms, um, with like certain names or numbers, because they are their property, and um, yeah. So sometimes yeah. you can you can see that. So, um, so the next question would be, what can we do? Um, the second step to fighting a battle is choosing to do something about it, right? Unfortunately, many people don't want to think about such atrocities as human trafficking, and many can easily ignore these issues because they're not directly affected by these horrors. So, so what do we do? Um, well, one way to combat an evil is to take no part in it, which sounds a little surprising, but our small acceptances of objectifying people leads to the continuation of further evils. So our mindset is actually very important. How we treat our fellow human beings is imperative to fighting what we perceive to be a greater evil. Um, when, we, when we condone treating others as less, we are giving in to the mentality of the trafficker and the rapist. Sounds a little yeah. radical, but it's true. Predators view their victims as subhuman creatures, objects, a means to an end, um, or property. So when we laugh at a homosexual joke, when we subconsciously rate a person's value by their physical looks, when we use our boyfriend or girlfriend simply for pleasure, or when we justify porn or lust, we are joining the predator's evil ideology. Um, also, we can actively fight against these evils, educating ourselves for the signs of these evils, praying for God to use us in any opportunity, joining people that actively fight against evil, and taking part in local co coalitions against human trafficking is a good way to start. Also, um, being vocal about these atrocities, listening to victims, being available to people are all ways to fight against these evils. Um, I personally have um, had a lot of people contact me since talking about these issues, uh, and um, a lot of victims. And it's actually been a huge privilege um, just simply because I think part of the healing process for many of these victims is um, just to have the permission to tell their story and to be listened to. 
Um, I, yeah, I also think um, that it's been a privilege because they've been educating me on how the mind of a victim works and also the modus operandi of um, predators, how they work. And it's very predictable. They, the, many predators act the same way. And so I think that's important to educate ourselves on um, so that we recognize abuse and so we can help others recognize abuse. Um, a lot of yeah. times victims don't even know, um, they don't even know they're being abused. So um, I would just like to encourage everyone to look into their local laws about homeless youth or trafficking prevention or foster care and to uh, go to human trafficking training and definitely report suspicious activity. Uh, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Erica. Um. I think you were going to mention some websites um, shortly. Um, one great yeah. way that I love to, we also uh, do a lot of work with teaching people about domestic violence, and there's a great website resource out there that teaches about healthy relationships and what's bad. It's called loveisrespect.org, mm -hmm. and in that, they outline different kinds of abuses, whether it be sexual, physical, emotional, technological, financial, um, you can go through and look down through all the types of red flags, even in your own relationship, if you're in a relationship that you're not sure maybe is a little bit unhealthy, um, go through and look through there, and, and of course, don't be afraid to tell somebody if you're in a bad position. Yes, definitely. What, um, one great book um, that listeners can read is um, The Gift of Fear by Gavin DeBecker. It um, outlines some of that, and I was really surprised just um, how much I, I learned. Um, and then also some good websites um, are is the Children's Rescue Initiative. Um, is that .org or .com? .org. 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 Okay. So. Okay. And then also um, for Idaho, ambitionsofidaho.org, um, many states have a site dedicated to that. Um, the polarisproject.org and also human trafficking hotline.org. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what we're going to um, uh, talk about next is uh, what is Children's Rescue Initiative uh, or what we sometimes call it CRI. CRI's motto is to rescue, restore, and raise up. So I'm going to go ahead and quote um, the founder on this, um, talking about rescue. Uh, CRI is an action-based organization. We advocate as well as raise awareness, but we also go into the depths of despair and conduct rescues. CRI sends specially trained teams into, human, into known human trafficking and slavery locations and rescues children, women, and families from the life of bondage that they are forced to endure. Through intel collection and our network of on-the-ground assets, CRI goes in and does the work, rescuing people from the atrocities of modern-day slavery, whether forced labor, human trafficking, or sex workers. While most of what we do is on a global scale, CRI is working diligently to do the work here in the States as well. So, um, I wanted to go ahead and share a little bit about my experience of finding about uh, finding out about TRI. Um, Jonah, uh, who is my husband currently, um, has always had a dream of helping people in these kinds of situations, and um, even as a young teenager. And so while we were dating, um, he was super excited to tell me about Children's Rescue Initiative. Because um, not only were they asking, you know, um, for donations, but they are also saying, hey, you can practically and actively help us out um, and come to training. And so um, he told me about a training that was coming up. And it was a week before our wedding. And there wasn't another one until months and months later. And so I'm like, go do it. I think it'll be great. So he went and he loved it. He was totally impressed with the people um, and very uh, challenged himself in many different ways uh, to continue training. And we just fell in love with the CRI family. And so that's how we um, 
got involved and then I got to go to the medical training um, in August and was um, overwhelmed with the training that we received. Keith was a great trainer and um, yeah. I can't wait to go back and, and do more training. Um, yeah, so I can't say enough about CRI. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about Restore? The training you were talking about was, it's called Teams Training. And it's open yes. to anyone that's interested. Yes. Good point. And the medical training, um, that as well, that was pretty much like a college course. You guys really got <laughs> with some good information. Yes, we got more more education than, I mean, yeah. the course should have been double the price. It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Good. Okay, so would you like to talk a little bit about, um, so I talked a little bit um, about rescue. Do you want to talk about restore? Yeah, restore is my favorite. Um, I'll read from the information from the website real quick just to give you an idea. Um, after being rescued, Children's Rescue Initiative transports the victims away to what we call restoration homes um, where they're placed with families and the children are then taken care of in a Christian home. Um, and it's not always done in a day. I mean, the, the rescues will take place in a day, but once they get put in the families, it's a lifetime. So if we rescue a, a child when they're five, they're in our program until they're 18. Um, okay. Families are kept together, which is super amazing and exciting. Um, and then schooling is an important next step that happens with the children. Um, a lot of them are born into poor families and have access to little or no education. Um, so what happens is we'll help with all that. Um, like I said earlier, this is my favorite part of it because um, I have the opportunity being the sponsorship director to see the photos of the children when they're rescued. And then I yeah. get to see them within a the few weeks or months afterwards and to see a child go from a dead blank stare, no life, just a soul, just empty to a few weeks later after being in a loving home that's been prayed over and poured over in faith, they yeah. get that childlike joy and happiness back. It's so amazing. And uh, wow. so we watch the kids go through that, and we have um, an operator in country that goes and monitors all our families so that we can make sure that every single child is taken care of the way we want them taken care of. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize that, that you, um, CRI has help with nationals there. I think that's probably a huge yeah. part. Yeah. yeah. We're helping to pro provide income for our oversight over in the country. And um, with that, he's obviously able to help his family a little bit more. Um, yeah, it's really exciting. Um, so I don't know if some of you understand, but uh, why is this a big deal? Um, over in third world countries, if you're not well to do, if you're not wealthy, you don't go to school. So the cycle of poverty just continues. And a lot of times what happens with traffickers um, is the family will come approach a loan shark or a trafficker, um, maybe not necessarily knowing that, um, and they'll say, hey, I don't have money for my next meal for my family. Can I, loan, can I borrow $10 or you know whatever it costs for that food? And they'll be like, yeah. Here's some money, and now you owe me a thousand percent interest, and that interest will never ever be paid back. So that person then either has to sell their child to make up for the debt, or um, they continue to go on into bondage. Um, so right. unfortunately, a lot of these children that we're res rescuing will never go back to their families. They either have been orphaned, or <laughs> their parents themselves have sold them into trafficking. So that's obviously not a safe place to send their children back to. Right, yeah. So. Okay, that, that's awesome. So will you explain a little bit um, um, about your job specifically? Yeah, so being the sponsorship director, um, 
I get all the intel information right fresh after the guys go on the rescue or the team, excuse me, it's not all guys. Mm -hmm. um, after they get back from the rescue, I start taking names and applying them with photos because as soon as they rescue the children, they start taking photos so we can document everyone. Um, yes. So we get names, ages, all that. So I start putting all that together and we have files put together for each child so that when we get a sponsor, um, we can send you pictures and information about that child. Thing. Right. So um, I think some people don't realize that anyone can really be a sponsor, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So like um, we, and where do we go to do that if we wish to help sponsor a child? Yeah. Okay. So go to um, the children's rescue.org and on there is a link to donate. Click on the donate button and you can either choose to be a one-time sponsor or one-time donor or click to sponsor a child. Um, if you click to sponsor a child, you can set up a PayPal um, monthly payment so that every month it just comes automatically out of your account and that'll go monthly into our account and we'll send that overseas to take care of the children. Okay. When you do that, we'll send you a picture too. Okay. That's great. Yeah. And Okay. Fine. So, um, also, uh, the last one is raise up. Yeah. And uh, so, to quote the uh, CRI again, education is vital to creating a slave free world. Rescued children rarely have any education, which Erica just talked about. CRI helps fund the construction of a large school for rescued children and also supports schools around the world to educate children rescued from human trafficking and child labor. These kids are the next generation of advocates for a slave-free world. Yeah. So what I, what I love about CRI is that there's a bunch of average people that make up uh, the teams. Um, yeah. So when I mean average, I mean people that have insecurities just like the rest of us that have weaknesses that um, have, you know, fears, and yet they've chosen to overcome those um, for a greater good and to help these, these people. And that's really truly what our job is to do as Christians. Um, and so I think I'd like to end with just you sharing, Erica, a little bit about what it's like to be the um, as a wife of a team member who actually goes on mission. Yeah, definitely not for the faint of heart. <laughs> um, my husband was in the Marines. Um, so one of the things that attracted me to him when we first started dating was that he taught self-defense and I wanted to learn how to teach that. And so the thing that connected us even further than that was that he had already been on some rescues. When Haiti had their earthquake several years back, he was down there rescuing children off the streets and bringing them to an orphanage. Um, so I knew going into this thing that he was somebody I'd have to really depend on God to take care of and watch over. And um, Psalm, Psalms 91 says that when we put our trust and our hope and when we abide in the Lord that he protects us and yeah. that has really had to be my my spine um, to know that we love the Lord he's going to take care of things and so I definitely put that at the forefront of every trip that he goes on um, I do plan on going um, when awesome. I finish school I'm really excited about going um, but that's great yeah, in the meantime, um, it's def like I said, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. The Lord has really bonded us in a sense of having just a really solid core in our marriage, which has been amazing because it's enabled me to be able to let him go and yes. knowing that it's, it's going to be okay. And we love to communicate, so the communication when he's overseas on a completely different time zone is always, like, heart-wrenching, but we get through it. And yeah. It's to have other team members like yourself, Tony, because when he goes overseas and I can reach out and say, Hey, I'm having a hard day. I need to just have a friend say, hi, I love you. <laughs> and it, it makes so each other. Yeah. 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 And that's the awesome thing that I've loved so far about CRI. Um, 
as a wife because I've created a network of other strong, powerful women that yeah. are there for each other and kind of, you know, if somebody else's husband is over there at the same time, it's great. Just reach out and say, Hey, how are you doing today? And right. Um, yes. You know, I, for me too, I, I thought when I went to training that I was kind of stepping into a man's world a little bit and yeah. I was totally welcomed and appreciated and yeah. Um, yeah, there are definitely some strong women involved in CRI, not just yeah. guys, so definitely. Yeah. Well, thanks Erica for, for coming on the, on the episode and sharing. Is there any last words you have? Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it. Great. All <laughs> right. Well, hopefully we can maybe have you on again. We, there's lots of different topics that we can cover. And um, CRI, I know, is definitely both of our passions. So I'm yeah. glad we got that. I look forward to it. Thank you so much, Tony. Thanks. Thank you for listening to The Monstrous Regiment. We hope this podcast inspires and equips you to go and exercise dominion for Christ's kingdom. Terrible as an army with banners. The Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network brings to you a complete lineup of podcasts where you will hear practical and tactical theology. Our desire is not simply that you consume our shows, but that you also live out your faith in every area of life. We can talk all day long about these things, but if we fail to put them into practice, then we fail as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, our King. Subscribe now to your favorite Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network shows, or you can subscribe to the Reconstructionist Radio Master Feed where all of the content we produce, including the audiobooks and audio articles, will pop up as soon as they are available. And don't forget to visit ReconstructionistRadio.com to volunteer as a narrator or to partner with this ministry financially. May the Holy Spirit stir you into action for Christ and His kingdom.